students welcome to my live teaching learning session of mmpc 010 managerial economics in today's session we will discuss about block 3 unit 7 8 and 9 in which you will study about production analysis and cost analysis production and cost both are very important concept because any business entrepreneur must understand this concept of production analysis and how cost is analyzed because each and every producer want to gain maximum profit at minimum cost and we can maximize output level and minimize cost level when we analyze about production and cost concepts so let us start from first topic production and cost 
analysis. There are so many types of cost. Do you know what is the meaning of cost? Cost means the money expenses which incurred in the production of goods and services is called cost. There are so many types of cost, but we can broadly categorize cost concept into two main categories. One is short run cost and other is long run cost. There are mainly two types of cost. One is short run and other is long run cost. In short run, there are so many costs like total cost, total fixed cost, total variable cost, managerial uh, marginal cost and average variable cost, average fixed cost and average cost. So these costs are called short run cost curves. Number one is total cost. Total cost is the sum total of fixed cost and variable cost. We know that factors of productions are four. One is land, second is labor, third is capital, and fourth is entrepreneur. These four factors are known as main means of production or primary factors of production. Without land, we can't produce any commodities. And by using land, the reward for land is rent. If we hire labor from outside, then the reward for labor is wages or salaries. And the reward for using capital is interest. And entrepreneur reward is profit. So all these rewards of factors of productions considered as cost. Here four factors of production, in these four factors of production, some factors are fixed in nature and some factors are variable in nature. Like land is fixed factor, labor is variable factor, capital is fixed and entrepreneur is variable. So if we use fixed factors in production of the goods and services, the cost which is related with fixed factor is called fixed cost. And the cost incurred by using variable factors that is called variable cost. And the submission of fixed cost and variable cost is known as total cost. Next is average cost. Average cost is per unit cost of output and marginal cost is the net change in total cost or in other words we can say that if we include one more additional unit of labor for producing goods and services then there will be change in total cost. The net change in total cost is called marginal cost. And average fixed cost is the per unit cost of fixed factors. And same as average variable cost is per unit cost of variable factors. And if we add average fixed cost and average variable cost, then we can get average cost or per unit cost of output. So average cost is the sum total of average fixed cost and average variable cost. Total cost is the submission of total fixed cost and total variable cost. Marginal cost is the net change in total cost. And all these costs are called short run cost. So in today's session, we will discuss all these topics in detail. Now, what is the meaning of production and cost analysis? You know that production, production means to produce goods and services. 
in physical So production analysis is in physical term analysis. And the cost analysis is in monetary terms. Because we always analyze cost in terms of money. What expenses incur in the production of goods and services? So, cost analysis is monetary terms, and production analysis is related with physical term, in which we can see, we can touch any produced goods and services. So, these concepts constituting cost and production analysis. In cost concept, we will study about what is the meaning of cost. And what are the different types of cost and we will classify the different types of cost and what is the relationship cost and output economies and diseconomies of scale what is the meaning of economies of scale economies means benefits of scale when we produce goods and services in large scale then producer will get some internal and external benefits this is known as internal or external economies of scale when producer get benefit by producing production in a large scale that is called economies and when producer sacrifice or when producers suffer some losses that is called diseconomies of scale Economies and diseconomies, both concepts are related with returns to scale. And returns to scale is a long run concept. In long run, all factors of production are variable. When we produce goods and services by using all the factors of production, if we can change all the factors of production units simultaneously, then output can increase in the beginning that is called increasing returns to scale and increasing returns to scale occur due to economies of scale. When production stages go down or diminishing returns to scale law is applicable that law will be applicable due to this economies of scale. Next is production function are some of the points constituting cost and production analysis. So in today's session, production and cost both we will analyze in detail and how it is helpful for managers. We will study about this thing also. Now next is cost analysis. What is the meaning of this concept cost analysis? You know that cost is the money expenses which incurred in the production of goods and services and cost analysis refers to the study of behavior of cost in relation to one or more production criteria like size of output, scale of operation, price of factors of production. So cost analysis refers to the study of all these things which are related with production of goods and services like how much output we are producing if we are producing more output then we would have to put more cost and what is the scale of operation if we are producing in a large scale then we will get some benefits like internal and external economies of scale will uh, exist in the business enterprises and if we are producing in a small scale then we will have to put more cost and what are the price of factors of production if prices uh, are more then cost will rise if prices of factors of productions are less then cost will decrease so factors of production if it is available at a cheaper rate then cost will be declined and if factors of production are available at higher prices, then cost will rise. So cost analysis is concerned with uh, these things like 
output size, scale of operation, and price or factors of production. Next is short run production cost. You know that there are so many costs which is related with short time period like total cost, total fixed cost, total variable cost, average cost, average fixed cost, average variable cost, and marginal cost. So average fixed cost. Average fixed cost is the per unit cost of fixed factors. And you know that fixed factors are land and capital, which can't change in short run. But in long run, we have too much time. In long run, all the factors of production are easily changeable. So in long run, no one factor is called fixed. But in short run, some factors are fixed and some factors are called variable factor. So in long run, there is no difference between fixed and variable factors. So average fixed cost is the per unit cost of fixed factors. And average fixed cost curve is always rectangular, hyperbola, or downward sloping curve from left to right. AFC curve is downward sloping curve. It may be parallel to the x-axis but never intersect x-axis, never touches to x-axis. Next is average variable cost. Average variable cost is per unit cost of variable factors. Its curve is always U-shaped curve. And U-shaped curve, why it is U-shaped curve? Due to the applicability of law of variable proportion. Law of variable proportion is known as returns to a factor. This law is applicable in short run. When some factors are considered fixed and one of the main factor which is labor that is called variable factor. If we increase the additional unit of one more additional unit of labor input as well as we increase the units of labor keeping other factors constant then production in the beginning will increase. After that, production will become maximum. And at last, production will start falling. That is called law of variable proportion or diminishing law of diminishing return and returns to factor. In the beginning, when production increases, then cost decreases. When production becomes maximum, cost will become minimum. When production starts falling, then cost starts rising. Production curve is always reverse U-shaped curve, but cost curve is always direct U-shaped curve due to the applicability of law of variable proportion. That's why ABC curve is U-shaped curve. And you know that AC or average total cost both are same. If we say AC, average cost or average total cost, both are same concept. Average total cost is the summation of average fixed cost and average variable cost. So if we add both these cost curves, then we can get average total cost curve. It is also U-shaped curve. And why it is U-shaped curve? The first reason is that average cost is the summation of average fixed cost and average variable cost. And the other reason is due to the applicability of law of variable proportion or law of diminishing return or returns to a factor, in the beginning production increases, at that time cost decreases. Here cost is declining in the beginning. After that, in the center state of this position, here cost becomes minimum. And at last, cost, cost start rising. So average total cost is also U-shaped curve and it is always uh, above the average fixed cost curve and average variable cost curve because it is the sum total of average variable cost and average fixed cost. And the gap in between of average variable cost and average uh, total cost, in the beginning this gap will be higher but at the last this gap will be lower. 
but ATC and ABC can never intersect each other. They may go parallel, but never intersect each other. And in the beginning, the gap in between of average cost and average variable cost will be maximum or higher and at last it will start declining but never intersect each other never touches to any curve now next is marginal cost curve marginal cost curve is also u-shaped curve and it always intersects average total cost curve and average variable cost curve at its lowest point where average cost is minimum where average variable cost is minimum, MC always cuts AC and AVC at its lowest or minimum point and then becomes start rising. MC in the beginning is falling. After that, MC start rising. So MC curve is also U-shaped curve and it intercepts AC and AVC at its lowest point. So this is the relationship between short run cost curves. In short run cost curves, we will explain this relationship with the help of AFC, ABC, ATC and MC. Now types of production cost. There are different types of production cost. One is direct cost. Direct cost is that cost which is directly we have to pay. The money expenses which we have to pay directly for producing any goods and services is called prime cost or direct cost. Next is like direct material, a producer uh, use direct material which can be seen which is tangible in nature if we put direct labor, direct uh, material, direct uh, raw material and other factors which are useful for the production of goods and services, that cost is called direct cost. And other is overhead cost or overhead cost is known as indirect cost. In other words, indirect cost can be say that it is the cost which is directly not seen, but it exists in the production of goods and services. Indirect cost, other name is implicit cost. Direct cost name is explicit, which can be seen directly or explicitly. And indirect cost, in other words, we can say that indirect cost is implicit cost. Implicit cost is that cost which incurred in the production of goods and services, but not directly seen. For example, if producer or business entrepreneur use his efforts, uses manual labor, he works himself in his business enterprises, then he will not directly pay to wages himself. It means, he will not pay wages to himself, but the, if he hire worker from outside, then he has to pay wages to the that worker. It means the cost, if we use our money in business enterprises, then we will not pay ourselves to interest. But if we hire money from outside or any banking institution, then we have to pay uh, interest rate. So, the cost which exists in the production of goods and services, but not you can clearly or directly see that, that is called indirect cost. Self employed resources cost is called indirect cost or implicit cost, like indirect material, indirect labor, indirect expense, expenses. All these costs are known as overhead cost or indirect cost. Next is, there are so many costs like uh, opportunity cost. Opportunity cost is that cost 
which is the next best alternative for corn if we want to produce one commodity then we have to sacrifice the other commodities production we know that resources are limited and wants are unlimited if we want to gain something we have to lose something so the cost which incurred by producing one commodity more then we have to sacrifice the other commodities production if we want to gain more benefit then we must have to sacrifice the other benefits that is called opportunity cost so next best alternative which we have to foregone for getting one main thing that is called opportunity cost next is ex explicit cost explicit cost uh, we have discussed it is known as direct cost like direct material direct labor direct expenses cost is explicit cost and implicit cost is overhead cost or indirect cost like indirect material indirect expenses indirect labor cost is known as implicit cost now next term is normal profit this normal profit is no profit no loss when average revenue and average cost both are equal that is the situation of normal profit if firm is getting the same amount which firm is using in the production of goods and services that is called normal profit no profit no loss situation and economic profit is that profit in which we include direct cost and indirect cost both and economic profit is that profit in which producer get the minimum amount of profit which is required for the survival of business enterprises now next term is short run you know that short run is the Uh, short time period you know, marshall has classified time period into three categories one is very short run next is short run other is long run in very short run nothing can be changed but in short run some factors can change but those factor which are called fixed factor they can't change in short run and long run is a very long time period in which all factors of production are perfectly variable and all factors of production can easily change simultaneously next is total product total product is the total amount of goods and services which we can produce with the help of four factors of production and other factors like fuel raw material and uh, and other things which are necessary to produce goods and services marshal product is the net change in total production or in other words mp we can calculate by taking the difference in total production tp n minus tp n minus 1 or delta tp upon delta q if change in total production is divided by change in number of units then we can get marginal production average production is the per unit output or per unit uh, amount of output it can be calculated by dividing total production to quantity law of diminishing return is known as law of variable proportion or returns to factor which is applicable in short run and fixed cost is that cost which incurred in by using fixed factors in production of goods and services like land cost is fixed cost uh, rent cost is if you are paying rent for a building that is fixed cost and uh, capital uh, capital means fixed assets uh, like building cost machinery cost some machines are very uh, fixed in nature so all these expenses which incurred in fixed factors that is called fixed cost variable cost is that cost which can change 
according to the change in output level and variable factors cost is called variable cost for example labor cost is variable cost and raw material cost is variable cost and fuel cost is variable cost etc total cost is the summation of fixed cost and variable cost average fixed cost is the per unit cost of fixed factors average variable cost is the per unit cost of variable factors average total cost is the sum total of average fixed cost and average variable cost marginal cost is the net change in total cost or tcn minus tcn minus 1 or delta tc divided by delta q we can get marginal cost economies of scale means the benefits which we can gain by producing output in a large quantity and this economies of scale you know that excess of everything is bad if we produce more and more output then in the beginning we will get some benefits like internal and external economies of scale but if we we produce again more and more output then some uh, technologies which we are using the cost of these uh, uh, technologies uh, like depreciation cost will increase and if we have a limited piece of land area and if we use again more and more units of labor then production in the beginning will rise after that it will become constant and at last it start falling a producer or manager if we manager want to produce more and more output and in a long run he is uh, uh, increasing its uh, his business uh, scale and he is producing in a very large scale of uh, uh, output level in the beginning increasing return law will be applicable in that case economies of scale will be uh, occurred in the business enterprises but when things can't be manageable and things cannot be controlled by manager then this economies of scale will occur and this economies of scale means uh, losses of uh, increasing the size of a business enterprises some losses which incurred in the uh, production of goods and services that is called this economies of scale due to this diminishing return law will be applicable and constant returns to scale means uh, if we use the same amount of input and we get the same amount of output that is called constant returns to scale for example if we use 10% of input and get same 10% of output that is constant returns to scale if we use 10% of input but get 20% of output then it will be called increasing returns to scale and if we use 10% unit of input and get only 5% unit of output it is we are using more input but getting less output that is diminishing returns to scale so production may be in increasing returns to scale stage uh, and production may be in constant returns to scale stage and at last production will be in uh, which stage diminishing returns to scale so there are three main stages of uh, returns to scale or returns to a factor also next is minimum efficient scale minimum efficient scale is that uh, level of scale at which producer get the same amount whatever he is using in producing goods and services so this is minimum efficient scale and natural monopoly natural monopoly is that monopoly which is applicable in case of public utilities uh, or it occurs naturally or for example uh, this monopoly first of all monopoly is that market in which only single seller exist and the natural monopoly in some cases government has natural monopoly uh, when uh, we have to put more cost uh, in the starting of any project 
and after that costs will start declining that is natural monopoly market stage for example uh, in the beginning of the first metro train project uh, that cost was very higher but after uh, after that launching first metro if we connected to another lines and if we are expanding this lines to another area or another regions then cost will decline that is called natural monopoly so natural monopoly always exist in case of public utilities like uh, uh, delhi jal board lines or mtnl lines or lpg connections and uh, metro rail connectivity so all these things are related with natural monopoly so these are different terms which we will use in this production and cost analysis next is short run production cost you know that uh, production cost is always reverse u shape curve and cost curve is always direct u shape curve this curve is called this blue line is showing average production curve ap curve is always reverse u shape curve because in the beginning production is increases after that production will become maximum and at last due to diminishing returns to scale production will start declining and if ap increases mp increases before that if ap falls mp falls before that ap and where both are equal mp always cuts ap at its maximum point where ap is maximum mp cuts ap and start declining so this reverse u shape curve is called ap curve and mp can be zero mp can be negative but ap can never be zero can never be negative next is uh, cost curve cost curve is always u shape curve this brown line is showing average variable cost or average cost curve and mc is always uh, u shape curve and mc always cuts abc or ac at its lowest point so here when abc start falling when production is increasing then cost will decrease when production will become maximum cost will be minimum when production start falling cost will rising so cost is in the beginning always in falling trend then cost will become minimum and at last cost will start rising that's why cost curve is direct u shape curve and production curve is always reverse u shape curve so this is abc curve uh, and mc always cuts is abc or ac at its lowest point where mp is maximum then mc is minimum where mp and ap both are equal here mc and abc both are also equal when abc rise start rising mc rises before that then abc so this is the relationship between production curves and cost curves and we can derive cost curves with the help of production curves now this is the table of different types of cost how we can calculate it you know that there are different types of short run cost like uh, total fixed cost total variable cost total cost partial cost average fixed cost average variable cost and average cost if we have given only units of output and total cost if we have given only two things one is rate of output or unit of output and if total cost is given we can estimate all types of these cost like uh, fixed cost we can calculate variable cost we can calculate uh, by using the uh, formulas and mc also we can calculate afc abc is abc atc all these cost can be estimated with the help of only the number of unit and total cost if total cost is given 
then first unit of the total cost is called fixed cost. So 50 is called fixed cost and fixed cost will remain always constant or fixed at each and every level of output. That's why fixed cost is only 50, 50, 50 same. And total cost, you know that total cost is the sum total of total fixed cost and total variable cost. And if we have given total cost and we estimate total fixed cost, which remains always constant, if we deduct total cost and if we take the difference between total cost and total fixed cost, then we can get variable cost. So TC minus TFC is equals to TVC. Now here, uh, 50 minus 50 is 0, then 100 minus 50 is 50, then uh, 70, uh, 128 minus 50 is 78, 148 minus 50 is 98, 162 minus 50 is 112. So all these things we can estimate. Now next is marginal cost. Marginal cost is the difference of total cost. Uh, like uh, in the beginning, we will take uh, dash because MC is the uh, difference of total cost and difference in total unit of output. Delta TC upon delta Q. Uh, delta TC means change in total cost is 50 or 100. What is the difference in between of this? 50. And 0 to 1 is 1. So 100. Uh, here is the marginal cost is 50, then 28, then 20. The difference in 148 and 28, 128 is 28 and uh, 20. And uh, 162 and 148, the difference in between of this 14. 180 minus 162, 18. 200 minus 180 is 20. We can calculate it. AFC is the per unit cost of fixed factor. If fixed cost is divided by the unit of output, then we can get AFC. Like 50 is divided by 0, and then answer will be infinity. And 50 is divided by 1, answer will be 50. 50 divided by 2, answer will be 25. 50 divided by 3, 16.7. 50 divided by 4, 12.5, and so on. AVC is the per unit cost of variable uh, input. And if uh, VC is given, uh, VC is divided by number of unit of output, like 0 divided by 0, dash, 50 divided by 1, 150, 78 divided by 2, 39, and so on. We can calculate. And APC is the sum total of AFC and ABC. 50 plus 50 is 100, 25 plus 39 is 64, 16.7 plus 32.7 is 49.3. And 12.5 plus 28 is equals to 40.5. So it is the sum total of AFC and ABC. So this is the table of calculating all these costs. If we have given only the output units and total cost, we can estimate all these costs like fixed cost, variable cost, and marginal cost, average fixed cost, average variable cost, and average total cost. Now next is long run cost. Long run cost uh, is that cost which is related with long time period and long time period is that period in which all the factors of production can change easily or simultaneously and long run average cost curve we can derive with the help of short run average cost curves and long run average cost curve is always U-shaped curve uh, and it can be derived uh, with the help of short run cost curves. This long run cost curve is known as envelope curve or planning curve or disk shape curve because it is uh, why it is called envelope curve because uh, it is the it touches to all these short run cost curves at its lowest point and then we can derive this long run average cost curve so long run average cost curve for like an envelope like envelope cover all things same as LRAC, long run average cost curve, covers all the short run cost curves. That's why it is known as uh, envelope curve and uh, planning curve. We have, if we have too much time period, then we can easily plan for our business enterprises. We can minimize the cost of production and maximize the output level 
because we have too much time available. So long run total cost curve or long run average cost curve, sorry, long run average cost curve is always U-shaped curve and it is, uh, it always touches to all these short run average cost curve at its lowest point. U-shaped long run average cost curve for alternative plant size showing economies of large scale production. If we are, if we take an example, like if uh, a, if an industry has five plants, like and each and every plant, the cost curve uh, will be different. And uh, so SRAC1 is showing first business plant curve, short run average cost curve. And uh, SRAC2 is second business plant cost curve. SRAC3 is short run average cost for third business plant. And fourth SRAC4 is fourth business plant average cost curve in short run. And SRAC5 is uh, short run average cost curve in fifth business plant curve. If we are taking five business plant of uh, any business, uh, industry or any business enterprises, then we will uh, draw SRAC1, SRAC2, SRAC3, SRAC4, and SRAC5. And if we take tangent point of all these curves, then we can derive long run average cost curve. So LRAC is envelope curve or planning curve, and we can derive LRAC curve with the help of short run average cost curves. Now next is uh, these are different curves like total production curve. You know that total production in the beginning start increases or rising, then it will become maximum and at last it start falling. And total cost curve is the sum total of fixed cost and uh, variable cost. Uh, so total cost uh, can never start from the origin. It always start from the y axis and its shape is always uh, same as uh, variable cost curve and the reverse uh, as to shape curve. So in the beginning when increasing returns to scale law is applicable, then uh, total cost in increasing marginal return, then cost will decline. After that cost will start rising. So there are three stages of production, increasing return, diminishing return and negative return. Same as uh, total cost in the beginning, increasing marginal return, cost will decline and at the time of diminishing marginal return, cost will uh, start rising. Next is average production curve, a reverse U-shape curve, and MP is also reverse U-shape curve. MP can be zero, can be negative, but AP can never be zero because AP is the per unit uh, output, and per unit output can never be zero. And these are different uh, cost curves we have discussed. Uh, uh, in the beginning, like average fixed cost, average variable cost, average total cost, and marginal cost curves. Now, next is internal economies of scale in the long run. Economies of scale causes AC to fall. When economies of scale or benefits of scale will occur, then cost will decline. And this is the long run average cost curve. And why this cost curve shape is like this or u-shaped curve so in the beginning cost is decreasing why this cost is decreasing due to the applicability of economies of scale and uh, at the <clears throat> at this q3 point where cost is minimum this is the lowest point on lrac when output is uh, efficiently producing and cost is minimizing and production is maximizing so this is the optimal stage of production. And after that, when diminishing or this economies of scale is applicable, then cost will start rising. So these are uh, economies of scale arises from increasing returns to scale. Next is measuring cost, which cost matters? You know that accounting cost, accounting cost means actual expenses plus depreciation charges for capital equipment. Economic cost refers to the cost of a firm of utilizing economic resources in production, including opportunity cost. Opportunity cost is next best alternative. 
the cost associated with opportunities that are foregone when a firm's resources are not put to their best alternative use. And sunk cost is that cost which can't be recovered. For example, consider the purchase of uh, specialized equipment for a plant. Suppose the equipment can be used to do only what it was originally designed for and can't be converted for alternative use. The expenditure on this equipment is called sunk cost because it has no alternative use. So its opportunity cost is zero. Thus it should not be included as a part of the firm's economic cost. Next is accounting versus economic cost, accounting profit and uh, economic profit. Accounting profit include only explicit cost or accounting cost and economic profit is includes implicit cost, explicit cost and accounting cost. So if we include both types of cost like uh, explicit or implicit both the cost then we can estimate economic profit or economic cost and uh, accounting profit only includes explicit cost or accounting cost not indirect or implicit cost. Next is short run production and long run production. Now we have discussed in today's session, uh, first topic was cost analysis. After that we are doing uh, production analysis. Now there are two types of uh, production function. One is related to the short time period and other is related with long time period. So sh short run production function is known as returns to factor or law of diminishing return or law of variable proportion and long run production function is known as returns to scale. So short run production function is related with short time period where only one factor is variable and other factors are fixed. And in long run production function, when all the factors of production can change easily or all the factors of production are variable, then long run production function or returns to scale law will be applicable. Short run production function is known as log variable proportion and long run production function is known as returns to scale. Scale of production can't change in short run production function, but scale of production can change in long run production function. Factor ratio can change in short run, but factor ratio can't change in long run. And there are barriers to entry and exit in short run and long run there are no barriers, no restrictions for entry and exit. So this is the main difference in between of two types of production function which is uh, related with short time period and long time period. So we can classify production function in two categories, short run and long run. Short run is called log variable proportion and long run production function is called returns to scale. Now stages of production is three, increasing, constant and diminishing. So if we increase the number of units of variable factor with fixed factors unit, then in the beginning total production will rise after that it will become maximum and at last it start falling. So in first stage production will be at in increasing returns to factor stage. After that diminishing return law will be applicable and in third stage production will become negative then negative stage of return will be applicable. So here TP curve is always start from the origin. TP in the beginning increases then it will become maximum and at last it start falling. And you know that AP curve is reverse U shape curve and AP is reverse U shape curve but can never be zero, can never be negative. And MP remains always higher than AP curve. When AP increases, MP increases before then AP. And when MP falls, A, when AP falls, MP falls before then AP. And MP can be zero, can be negative. Where TP is maximum, MP will become zero. When TP start falling, MP will become negative. So there are three stages of production, increasing, constant and diminishing. 
and we can show with the help of total production, average production, and merger production curves. Next is a production isoquant. Isoquant curve is a, a set of combinations that can be used to produce a given level of output. ISO. What is the meaning of this ISO and quant? Q U A N T. ISO means same or equal, and quant is the short form of quantity. If we are, if we are producing same level of output by using fixed and variable factors, that is called isoquant. So isoquant curve is uh, showing the different possible combinations of two factors of production. If two factors of production we are using for producing goods and services, but they are giving us same level of output, that is called isoquant. So isoquant is a set of input combination that can be used to produce a given level of output and isoquant curve is always downward sloping curve and on x axis we will take labor and on y axis we will take a capital if we use more capital then we will use less labor if we use more labor then we will use less capital you know that labor intensive and capital intensive these two are the main technologies which producer can use for producing goods and services in some countries, labor is abundant, capital is less, and in other countries, capital is more, but labor is less. Factors are always limited, and wants are always unlimited. So if we have limited resources, then we have to choose in between of these two resources, what type of uh, factor we use in more quantity, and what factor we have to use in less quantity. If we use more labor, capital will be used less and if we use more capital, labor will be used less. That's why these different combinations, uh, if we take different combinations of labor and capital by producing the same level of output, then this curve is called isoquant curve. It shows different com possible combinations of two factors of production that give same level of output. Now next is uh, isoquant curve always shows different combinations of capital and labor which can produce the same amount of output like output level is 10. Either we use more capital, less labor, production level is 10. If we use less uh, capital and more labor, then again output level will remain same. So this is called isoquant curve. Next is isoquant curve features. Features of isoquant curves are number one is uh, uh, isoquant curve is always downward sloping curve, isoquant curve is always convex to the origin, isoquant curve never intersect each other, isoquant curve never touches to any axis. Isoquant curve may go parallel, isoquant curve may be more than one. When if we draw more than uh, one isoquant curve, it will be called isoquant map. So these are the features of isoquant curve. It is always downward sloping curve from left to right, convex to the origin, not intersect each other, never touches to any axis, and never um, intersect. And it may be go parallel. It may be uh, more than one. Higher isoquant shows higher output level, and lower isoquant curve shows lower level of output. Next is, uh, there are different uh, scales of production. You know that increasing return, decreasing return, and constant return. There are three types of returns to scale uh, stages. One is increasing returns to scale. Increasing returns to scale at this stage, uh, production in the beginning rises. When we use less input but get more output, that is increasing return. If we use 10% input but get 20% output, increasing returns to scale will be applicable. If we use 10% input and get 10% output, then constant returns to scale will be applicable. If we use 10% input and get 5% output, then decreasing returns to scale law will be applicable. So these are different stages of returns to scale and returns to scale law is applicable in long run, not in short run. 
and in long run all factors can change simultaneously or equally next is uh, optimum level of uh, output or least cost combination what is the least cost combination point where producer can get maximum output at minimum cost so these are different lines these lines are called iso cost line iso cost line is always a straight line and uh, which touches to x axis and y axis iso cost line is straight line curve and here three iso cost lines are drawn and uh, this is the downward sloping curve which is tangent to these iso cost line this is called iso quant curve where iso quant curve is tangent to the iso cost line that is the least cost combination point that is the equilibrium point or producer will be uh, in equilibrium position where iso quant curve is tangent to this iso cost line so here three iso cost lines are drawn and three iso quant curves are uh, draw like q1 q2 q3 and abc three points we can get and all these points are showing uh, that uh, optimum combination or least cost combination of output level so where producer will get uh, equi in equilibrium position at a point producer will, if iso cost line is uh, this first line l uh, then producer equilibrium will be at a point if iso cost line shifts to the right hand side then equilibrium point will shift from a to b and if iso cost line will shift uh, this uh, another line then equilibrium point will shift from b to c so all these points are showing that producer is getting maximum level of output at minimum level of cost so this is the uh, least cost combination diagram next is uh, marshall rate of technical substitution what is ridge lines ridge lines uh, shows that profit maximizing firm within these ridge lines or these economic region firm will get maximum profit because outside of them marginal product of inputs are negative so economic region of production is located within the ridge lines ridge lines are those lines uh, which is uh, showing that what is the economic region where firm can get maximum output at minimum cost these are ridge lines one ridge line is showing that here marginal productivity of capital is zero and the other ridge line is showing that marginal productivity of labor is zero and these three are iso quant curve which is always convex to the origin or downward sloping curve and in between of these ridge lines the economic region which lies in between of these uh, areas that is called economic region or economic profit uh, points next is uh, managerial use of production function why manager use this production function to calculate the least cost input combination to calculate the maximum input output <coughs> combination to decide the value of employing a variable input factor and it is helpful in long run decision making next is importance of production function in managerial decision making the intensity of current global competition often requires managers to go beyond the simple production function curve being competitive in production today mandates that today's manager also understand the importance of speed flexibility and what is commonly called lean manufacturing this is the learning curve learning curve is always downward sloping curve which measures the percentage decrease in additional labor cost each time output doubles next we can conclude from today's session that production and cost is very important for an organization a good manager will concentrate Uh, concentrate on technical and economic efficiency study of production and cost will help a manager to take decisions for maximizing organizational profit at last it can be concluded in this way that study and improvement of our knowledge about this this topic help us to fulfill our presentation objective thank you